Hi there, I'm Lean, and this is the third video in the Electronics Test Workflow series, where I'll be digging into the different parts of the workflow. In the last video, we walked through the hardware setup and performed a manual test. In this video, we're going to cover what to consider when building the test code that you want to automate. So when it comes to writing the code for the actual test steps, you can typically choose the language of your choice. One of LabVIEW's strengths is lower development and e development efforts for controlling instruments. But you might be more comfortable in Python or you've standardized on C. PXI drivers exist for these different options, so you're not locked in. But if we look at the big picture and we want to decrease development time across the entire NPI process, we ideally want to create custom measurements that can be more easily reused across different teams and different parts of the process. This isn't always easy because oftentimes the workflows actually differ between interactive measurements and test automation. And different teams or team members might have different preferences for programming languages. And mixing measurement code written in different languages is usually tough. This is where Instrument Studio Professional comes in. With Instrument Studio Pro, it enables the creation of custom measurement plugins that can be packaged up published or registered with a discovery service and made available for other team members and other software clients like TestStand to access and run on demand. And that's what we've used for building our, out our three tests, the FET characterization, filter test, and diet test. For the sake of time, we've already built these out, but let me show you what those first steps would look like if you wanted to build your own custom measurement. So to build a custom measurement plugin with LabVIEW, you'll need the LabVIEW measurement plugin generator tool. This will be available with Instrument Studio Professional. So right here, I have an open project. I've done nothing with it, I've just saved it. Um, what I would go do is go to tools and then create measurement plugin from right here. So this generator is going to now run and yeah, there we go. So first, it's going to ask me to just select a name. I'm going to call it my first plugin. And as soon as I click Create, so it's going to run. Uh, the generator is going to run, and it's now going to add a library and a set of files to my project. There we go. So my first plugin, this is the library that got automatically added. And I'll walk through the different VIs, but just we're going to start with actually running the service because this template is technically now ready to be run and built. So if we open run service VI and press run, so basically what it's doing is it's registering the plugin with the discovery service that I've mentioned. So it's available uh, to callers. So we can test this out with Instrument Studio. So if I want to create a manual layout, you're gonna notice that my first plugin is now available for me to, to use. And that's because it's running right now. Uh, here we just, it's just a simple uh, array pass through that's part of the template. Now, if I go back and stop the service and now try to open it again, you're gonna see that it's no longer available. So, here we go, let me close this for a second. So obviously, you don't want to always run the service, but once you've done with building everything out, you can build an executable, and we'll show you how we've done it with our filter test. But before we do that, let me walk you through a few of these different VIs that you would need to uh, modify to create a meaningful measurement that's not just an array pass through. So the measurement configuration, for example, that one would, uh, is where you would define your input uh, type definition, whereas the results is where you would define the output type definition. The measurement logic is where you would put the actual measurement logic of what you want the VI to do. Uh, the UI as well is where you would change up the user interface. So you would change a few of those. Um, there are some things you can change in advance that we don't recommend. I'm going to open now the filter test. So Again, because we don't have time to actually build everything out, we've done it for you. But for example, the measurement logic, if we open it right here, this is 
this is pretty much it. So we've already done all that. And then like we said, um, because we don't want to have to have a user go to run services and run it each time, what we've done is we've already built an executable. And then this executable, we've made sure that we've placed it in the specific folder, in the specific services folder. And what that means is right now, there's a release version of our filter test measurement plugin that is that has been launched. It's been launched and it's available for people to across different teams to call on it. So I'm gonna show you where we already have it. So I already have here the filter, the FET, and the diode. And let's see if I wanted to open it up. Manual layout, you'll see that I can access all three diode te test, FET test, and filter test from here. So that's how we would, you know, I know we, I had to skip a lot of steps, but that's the beginning and the end of how you would create these custom measurement plugins. And now what's really cool though is that I've done this, um, I showed you the filter, how we've built it with LabVIEW. We've done the same with, diode, with the diode test, but we used Python and we used the Python measurement plugin generator instead. So it's slightly different, but follows a similar process of these uh, the library of files that you would need to modify and then create an executable and publish. And just if you're curious, here's our measurement uh, uh, code for Python. So now what I have right here is I've got the FET test that we've built in LabVIEW, the filter test that we've built in LabVIEW, and the diode test that we've built in Python, all running on the same uh, environment. So regardless of the language, it's there, regardless of which team built it, it's there and available. Let's just run a few to have fun with them. So let me first, if we remember in an earlier video, we mentioned that we're using a switch executive to route these tests. So I'm gonna open up a session. Let's run a filter test. It's gonna be a slightly slower test, but let's connect it and then go and then run it. We'll give it a few seconds. It's a lot of, I think it's a lot of samples that it's trying to put together. And I heard it do something. There we go. We've got our frequency response. And then if we want to now do the FET test, the FET characterization, I would just disconnect the filter and then let's do it on UUT0 again. Connect. Okay. And then run this one as well. And there we go. So this is just us again showing you how we've uh, created these custom tests. We're now using it to interact with the test. So this is probably something you'd want to do in validation uh, versus in, in production, but we'll see later how we move this over to production test. So now we have, like I said, we have custom tests that can be used across teams, across programs, it can be written in different languages, all in one environment, not a light achievement. In the following video in the series, I will walk us through putting these tests, these same tests, in an auto-scheduled sequence in test stand. Watch the series today to learn how you can build your custom test system too. Thanks.